Hi, I'm John Lay with Peter Bodo for Tennis.com's Quick Hits. Pete, as we preview the men's 2009 Australian Open, what has the first few weeks of the uh, this year, the calendar year, taught us about what's going on in the game? Well, you know, I think what, what the signal sent in the first couple of weeks of the season has been its business as usual from last year. Now, change of the guard is probably too strong a word because, you know, you've, you've Federer's not going anywhere. Nadal, goodness knows, he's got a lot of great tennis ahead of him. But as we saw last year, there, there is a host of guys, five or six guys, who are going to be in contention for this title. So what's really happened here is I think this, you know, we've begun kind of a bit of a new era in tennis. And we've got a new number one seed for the Australian Open, and that's Rafael Nadal. He's never won a slam on a hard court. He's won French, obviously, numerous times, and he just won Wimbledon. Can he break through and finally win on a hard court? Well, yeah, you know, he, you know this, look, this guy can win on anything. There's, there's no question about that. The, the, the funny thing is, you know, why hasn't he done better at the Australian Open? You know, the surface seems it really suits his game. You know, he's got, he's got a nice big bounce. You know, it's a fairly cushioned surface. He can run all day the way he likes to do. And, and, it, and the ball takes, uh, the court takes spin very well, too. Uh, you know, I think he's had a little bit of bad luck in Australia. If you look back through the years, a number of champions really struggled. Pete Sampras struggled in Australia, even though his game was suited to it, too. Can he win? Sure. Will he win? Big question. Another big question is how Roger Federer will do this year. The new world's number two uh, had a pretty good run last year, got to the semis, but he's battling mono. He was kind of sick for the first half of the year. How do you think he's going to start out? Well, it's interesting because, you know, that raises the issue, you know, this whole battling mono issue. While I don't doubt that he, that he was suffering the after effects of that, of, of that illness, you know, still Australia's not really a slam dunk. I don't think it's a slam dunk for Federer, you know, not on that surface anyway. Uh, so, you know, he's under a little bit of pressure this year. You know, he's going back there and everyone's saying, well, you know, last year was an aberration. You know, he had mono, this and that. But, you know, we're going to see what happens because the game has changed in the past 12 months. The biggest lesson of the past 12 months is the game changes really, really quickly. You mentioned some of the great young players coming up. Of that group, who do you think can bag his first Grand Slam title in Australia? Well, you know, it's not going to shock the world, but, you know, you got to put Andy Murray at the top of that list. But watch out for Joe Wilfred Tsonga. You know, Tsonga's going in there as a defending finalist. He played great in that final, too, so it wasn't like he had the nerves. He's shown subsequently in his performance in Master Series events and in Davis Cup that, you know, he, he, he's really pretty impervious to pressure. The question is, can he stay healthy enough? And don't forget, you've got also Juan Martin Del Potro, who had a terrific end of the year last year, who's very, very good on this kind of a surface, who's a big, strong, physical guy. He's going to have really benefited from the rest he had since the Davis Cup and the year-end tournaments. So right now, you know, you're looking at a pretty wide open field. Got to figure the way he's playing. It's Andy Murray's time. Well, that wraps up Tennis.com's Quick Hits. I'm John Levy with Peter Bodo.